this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the Lenovo ThinkPad tablet. This is an Android 3.1 honeycomb tablet. It's 10.1 inches and it's Lenovo's more professional version of a tablet. We've looked at the Lenovo IdeaPad K1 which is their consumer oriented one. That's why it's called an IdeaPad. What this brings to the table is an IPS Gorilla Glass display and some more ports and that lovely ThinkPad kind of look. If you're a ThinkPad person like I am, you're going to like solid build quality and that traditional ThinkPad soft touch finish with the logo right here. Feels nice, grippy, does show some fingerprints but not too bad. Obviously not a super thin tablet. And here we've got the optional pen. Though it has a built-in silo for the pen, the pen is $30 extra and they go with that little red cap to remind you of the eraser stick pointer that's used on Lenovo tablets. And you yank that guy out like so. And this is an active digitizer pen. It uses an Ntrig DuoSense display on the device, which means that this pen is, is not capacitive. It's not like your finger. So if you rest your hand on the glass, you can tell the difference between the pen and your hand, and you won't get any vectoring or anything like that. And it's also much more precise than even using a capacitive stylus. The front is a little different. Most Android Honeycomb tablets don't have any buttons. The operating system is designed not to use buttons, but Lenovo's added home, back, a web browser launcher, and a rotation lock button here. They're actually sometimes a little bit annoying. But they're not that easy to press accidentally, but I don't see a need for them. Maybe you'll like them. On the side here we have a little door that drops down. Some things are covered with doors, some aren't. Go figure. Generally speaking, slots are covered here. There's a SIM card slot, but sorry, we, there's no 3G version yet available, however, that's a real SIM card slot. If you stick a SIM card in there, it's not going to drop into oblivion on the inside. There's actually a carrier, but there's no chip inside, actually, to make use of that. This is your full-size SD card slot over here next to it. And we have a micro USB port, an HDMI port, it's a mini HDMI port, headphone jack, nothing up here except for your power button. Volume controls are over here. And on the bottom, there's a sliding door here for some reason that covers the full-size USB port with USB host. That means you can use keyboards, mice, flash drives. We plugged in an unpowered USB hard drive and it spun it up. There was no problem getting enough power to it, but it actually did not mount it and see it. Bummer. This will also connect to the Lenovo ThinkPad optional keyboard that we're going to show you in a bit that sells for $100. There's a front-facing camera here for video chat, and on the back we have a 5-megapixel camera. Takes okay photos, could use a little more color saturation and tends to wash out a little bit, but you know, tablet cameras are generally not so amazingly good. 10.1-inch IPS display, standard resolution 1280 by 800, and like most all Honeycomb tablets, it's powered by a 1 GHz NVIDIA Tegra 2 dual-core CPU with a gig of RAM. It's available at 16 gigs of storage for $4.99, or you can get with 32 for $5.69, or even 64 for $6.69. So it's priced fairly competitively with other Tier 1 tablets. Lenovo has customized this. You can see the front here. That's a lot like the IdeaPad, and that's something we wish they actually hadn't put so much of software on here. Uh, the IdeaPad K1 had the same problem. There was just so much third-party software on there that actually slowed it down and made it a little less stable. This guy is more stable, but we do notice occasional slowdowns when using it. You can see we've got Lenovo's own app shop over here. This is a quick launcher. And because there's so much software on here, you can configure what you want each of these to do because there's many options. If you hit watch, it defaults to mSpot Videos, a service that also AT&T uses for video rentals and downloads but you can choose to assign gallery to that or something else. There's two different video players. There's Lenovo Zone, which is also called Video Player. So if you tap on a video, you'll get an option to play with Video Player or Video Player. At least they have different icons to give you a clue. Uh, the built-in gallery application does a better job playing HD video in terms of frame rates, by the way. Got shortcuts to e-reading here. The Kindle is preloaded on this, so is Zinio. Music player, obviously your email, and the web browser in the middle. Got McAfee security loaded here. I'm not sure that's really necessary, but since Lenovo is trying to sell this to businesses, not end users primarily, security is an important thing, and remote management, virus protection, that kind of stuff is here. There's a USB file copy utility as well, and we're going to show you how that works. It's very basic. If you stick in a flash drive, for example, which we're going to do right now, 
all this utility does is let you copy. If you use a third party file manager, you can get access to the files, and files do show up in galleries, say if you've got movies or something like that, so that's good. It's not limited like the Sony tablet is in that respect. So here we're looking at internal storage by default, and if we tap the little USB drive, drive button on screen, we'll see the USB drive files over here. I wouldn't call this the most beautiful or intuitive interface. And all it's going to let you do is copy. You can select a folder, if you want to copy the entire folder, or if you want to take a look inside the contents, you can check whatever it is you want to copy, and hit the copy button. And you choose where you want to put this. On the USB drive, that would be non-intuitive, don't think so. Uh, internal SD, yes. And it's going to put those at the root level of the internal storage area. Speaking of all things USB, if you plug this in using the micro USB cable to your computer, it will charge. It's a trickle charge. It's very slow. They say you should turn the display off if you wanted to charge, but it's there as some kind of fallback that's nice if you don't have your handy dandy charger with you. It supports both MTP and USB mass storage profiles, but uh, the, the bad thing is if you plug it in, it will not use USB mass storage for anything except for an SD card that's inserted. It won't use it for internal storage, whereas MTP, it will. The tablet runs Android OS 3.1 Honeycomb. So far, we have not gotten any updates to 3.2. A little bit of a bummer there, but we hope that it's coming. And your app launcher is the standard Google Honeycomb look here. We've got our apps here. Scrolling is just fine. So what do we have preloaded here? We've got AccuWeather, we've got Amazon Kindle, we've got Amazon MP3 Store. We've got Lenovo's App Store, we'll show you in a minute. Citrix for your business types. We've got something called e-reader. Which is pretty much the same one that we saw on the IdeaPad K1. You, you can sideload books. It's a little bit uh, quirky sometimes. So probably going to want to use something like Aldeco or Cool Reader or Nook if you want to sideload books. Lenovo likes card games, so we've got a bunch of card games preloaded over here. Hearts, Solitaire, Spades, Euchre. As I mentioned, M-Spot videos loaded if you want to rent videos. Uh, their prices tend to be a little bit higher than average, but that's okay. Slacker is pre-installed. There's Social Touch, Social Networking, which is basic social networking. It's okay. It's not great. We've got Poke Talk, Uvu for video chat. Of course, you can use Google Talk video chat as well. And it's probably a little bit more universal and reliable. As I mentioned, we've got Zinio on board as well. And an, a copy of the user guide. One neat thing about the ThinkPad tablet is that it comes with Netflix preloaded, just like the IdeaPad K1 and also the HTC Jetstream. While Netflix works on pretty much all Android 2.2 and 2.3 OS phones, finding it on Honeycomb tablets is still rare, which is a shame because you've got this really big screen here. So we've got Netflix loaded, and you can see the usual display of continue watching stuff of interest, and we're going to resume a video. And typical of Netflix is going to have to buffer up a little bit, and then it's going to play sharply. So that plays great. Of course, this is over Wi-Fi, so that's all we have. Looking good. So you got Netflix on the go with this. The tablet weighs 1.6 pounds, so this is no lightweight. This is no iPad 2 or Samsung Galaxy 10.1, and uh, hand might get a little tired holding it. I mean, that's not so different from the ePad Transformer, which is 1.5 pounds, or the Motorola Zoom, which is also 1.6, but just to note that it's not a light tablet. Compare it to the Lenovo IdeaPad K1 here. And you can see the display is brighter on the ThinkPad version as it should be since it's IPS also has much wider viewing angles. And in terms of thickness, they're both pretty thick. There's a little bit more taper going on with the IdeaPad and it's got that kind of gritty plasticky back, something like the Transformer, rather than having a nice ThinkPad looking back. And now we'll compare it to the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, which has, as you can see, an even brighter display. It also has much better speakers. Lenovo's speakers, mm, not so good. In terms of size, Lenovo's a little bit bigger overall, and obviously in terms of thickness, because Galaxy Tab is so darn thin, it's lots thicker. 
But what do you lose with the Galaxy Tab? A whole lot of ports. Since this is a business-oriented tablet, it also comes with an office suite. It comes with documents to go, and this can view, edit, and create office documents. And here's your splash screen right here. It's fully tablet HD aware. And if you want to create a new document, you just hit the plus button down here and choose between Word, Excel, or PowerPoint document. And you get a very basic interface at first with keyboard deployed. So we're going to... We'll take a look at some of your editing options here, and you can see here's your file menu, edit, view, format, insert, and more. So say you want to edit, there you go, toggle keyboard, select, select all, copy, paste, undo, redo, that kind of stuff. So a fairly basic interface, but it definitely gets the job done, and it's fairly compatible. Speaking of editing documents, Lenovo has a really cool accessory. This is $100, and it's a nice leather style portfolio case, or so it seems from the outside. And you open it up and you can see it's one of those folio style keyboard cases. So you pop in the tablet right here, there's the USB port. The bad thing is there goes access to your USB port once you plugged it in here. And you've got a really good, you know, Lenovo is to make, knows how to make keyboards, really, really good keyboard here with very good key travel, bigger size keys in the transformer with the keyboard dock we'll compare in a minute, and a little optical trackpad here and typical thing pad style buttons. So we'll pop it in so you can see how it looks. So here we got it slid into the mount and you can see here it has those ridges typical of other folio cases and you can choose which in incline you want. You've got three positions and it's firmly in place there. So now you've got your, your laptop substitute to go on the road. Again, really excellent keyboard. You've got a dedicated number row here and a bunch of Android functions. You've got your volume controls, home button, brightness, menus, search buttons, media playback controls all up here. And we've got arrow keys down at the bottom, always handy. And we've got a little virtual mouse here that actually functions well. Now we've got the ASUS ePad Transformer here with the keyboard dock, and it, this still one-ups Lenovo because this is one sturdy laptop-like guy. Once you've attached a laptop dock, it acts just like a standard notebook computer. When you open it up, you can see that you've got a trackpad here instead of the little optical eraser stick thing, but you know, honestly, they both work pretty much as well. And you've got quite a bit smaller keys here because Lenovo did away with the trackpad that could make a larger keyboard, and we'll compare those side by side now. Now we compare the two keyboards, you can see the Lenovo keys are a little bit bigger. They also have more travel and just more t tactile feedback. So you can see here side by side, we've got a little bit more height on the Lenovo ThinkPad keyboard, and that does help the key spacing. And in terms of the side by side thing, they're just about as wide. One thing that you do manage with the transformer is to keep your USB ports, because you get two built in on here, whereas the only USB port is on the device itself with the ThinkPad, and again, once you plug it into this USB port, you lose access to USB. It makes it a little bit less advantageous. But the good part is, when you have the ThinkPad inside of this, it's lighter than the Transformer plus keyboard, which weigh about three pounds together, and this weighs about, oh, two and a half, or a little bit less. In most other respects, this is your average, basic, normal honeycomb tablet. See, sometimes I have to tap at the screen twice. I'm not sure if that's because of the Entrick digitizer that's on here or if it's a little bit slow to respond. Uh, the HTC Jetstream also uses the Entrick DuoSense display as well with the capacitive touch and an active pen, though, and it was not as insensitive as this can be sometimes. This is not horrible, but once in a while, well, it happens. We're going to take a look at the web browser now, and you can see the standard keyboard here. It also has an XT9 keyboard. We'll visit our website. Loads well, quickly enough over Wi-Fi. Again, no 3G option yet. 3G option is coming. And this has Adobe Flash. We're running the latest version of Adobe Flash, which is 11 now. Scrolling speed is fine. Paint zooming good. And now we'll check out some Adobe Flash inside the browser. Of course, this also has a YouTube player, so if you're looking for YouTube content, that's also a very good way to play YouTube stuff. And I was playing 360p inside the browser. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech. That's Vegas, better. The HTC Amaze 4G for T-Mobile. As you can see, it's a pretty large phone. It's a 4.3-inch 
three inch display, which is the same as age. And we'll switch to full screen mode. 4.3 inch display, which is the same as the HTC Sensation, but this phone is actually a little bit bigger That's than the That's not bad performance. There's a couple of frame drops there, but it's okay. In terms of performance, the NVIDIA Tegra 2 dual-core CPU benchmarks at about 1550 on this, which isn't about among the top Honeycomb tablets. Uh, the best we've seen is 2200 or so, but it's not too bad, and it's a little bit better than the IdeaPad K1. It manages 60 on Linpax multi-thread tests and about 32 on the single-thread test. So it's pretty much average among Honeycomb tablets. Now we'll check out video playback performance and we're going to use the built-in gallery application because that performs the best for doing video playback. And again, if you had a USB drive plugged in a thumb drive or an SD card, that would also show up here inside of gallery. But we're going to use internal storage, or internal SD as it's marked on Android tablets, to get the best possible performance. And we're going to try first a 720p high profile video. <laughs> See your choice of video player or video player there to play it back. And that's on par with other Honeycomb tablets, and it's playing just fine, even though it's high profile, 720p. Now, some Honeycomb tablets won't even let you try to play 1080p high profile. Only standard profile, MPEG-4 is allowed. This one will let you do it, but the frame rates are not so good. We have a 1080p high profile movie trailer here that we're going to play now, and you're going to see a lot of frame drops. So not as smooth as it could be, but at least it doesn't stop you from trying. Now for 1080p standard profile, and again, you're probably not going to play this 1080p internally because the display resolution isn't even that high, but it does have HDMI out, so you might want to plug in a monitor or plug this into an HDTV to watch. And this plays just fine as it does on most Honeycomb tablets. Good frame rates. We've complained some about the software, the excessive amount of software that's on here, but one thing that I really like is Lenovo has customized the application picker here. You can see we've got a bunch of apps running, and you can actually close right from the list, which is most excellent. Gone, gone, gone. Gone, gone, just like that. Really nice and easy, much more expedient than going into settings and manually killing applications. Just as there's some fragmentation with different versions of Honeycomb, which really hasn't dampened my day, I must say. One thing that is a little bit distracting is that there are just app stores popping up everywhere. There's Amazon's, which isn't such a bad thing. Toshiba has their own, and Lenovo has their own. Now, I think Lenovo's reason, other than the usual, hey, everybody likes to make some money, is uh, this is a more secure and vetted place and since this is geared towards corporate users you know there's a place you can go where the applications have been checked out no trojans no viruses that kind of thing so it's pretty attractive looking here you can go between best sellers new recommended just free stuff and it has a fairly small set of sub small subset rather of what you can find on the android market but th there's enough here to, to look at and keep you busy for those of you who have watched our HTC Jetstream Android tablet review, know that you can use the pen that comes with the Jetstream, or actually it doesn't come with the pen, you'd have to pay a hideous $80 extra for it. But anyway, that pen does, it works everywhere, in everything. Now the, the ThinkPad, not so much. It works in Notes Mobile, and it works in some third-party applications. Like we've got Alias Sketchbook Express for tablets installed here. And there's a Sketchbook Pro that supports pressure sensitivity with this tablet, but you just see that okay, nice color. And, and you can see it works very fluidly. No skipping, nothing like you see with capacitive styli. It's nice, active kind of experience. And again, with the Pro version of this application, you do get pressure sensitivity. So there are third-party apps that support this, but in terms of what's built in here, other than making annotations on PDFs, 
There's not too much beyond Notes Mobile, but Notes Mobile is a pretty cool endeavor. So this does both handwriting recognition and it lets you just write and scribble. We'll start with the handwriting recognition and you can see some stuff that I've already done here before. And this is the font that it uses after it has recognized stuff and you can see you can select a word if you want, but we're just going to write something in cursive. And I actually got that right. If you print, you get better accuracy. Honestly, overall accuracy on this is about 70%. I don't have great handwriting, but that's about as good as it was doing. If you just want to write ink notes and keep them as ink notes, you tap here. And there it is. And it does a nice job making your handwriting look a little prettier than it really is. There's an undo and a redo function, and there's an eraser. So we can get rid of that if we want to. Now this stylus has a single button. The, the HTC Flyer and Jetstream have a two button stylus that does two different things. It does erase and another function. This one just functions to activate erase. If you press and hold it, you can erase. There it is. So overall, less capable in terms of not working everywhere, but at least it does work with art applications, uh, ones that do claim to work with DuoSense, Intrig, Active Digitizers, and it works inside of here pretty well. So. Certainly great for handwritten notes and diagrams, and okay, but not fantastic for handwriting recognition. But this is the first time we've really seen handwriting recognition on an Android tablet, so that in of itself deserves some kudos. The ThinkPad has a battery life of about 8 hours, which is average among Android 10.1-inch honeycomb tablets, and it's 3250 milliamp battery that's sealed inside the unit. It's perfectly capable of playing games, since this is your standard NVIDIA 1 gigahertz dual core CPU with graphics acceleration as well. Even if Lenovo is not thinking about gaming, you can whenever you've got some downtime. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad tablet running Android with a 10.1 inch IPS display. It has Wi Fi 802.11bgn, dual band, Bluetooth, and a GPS as well. It's available now starting at $499 for the 16 gig, and you can go all the way up to 64 gig. And sooner or later, we're going to see a 3G version, Lenovo tells us, and that actual SIM card saw it's a good hint that. It is indeed coming, and maybe it's not too far off. No idea on pricing for that, though. I haven't announced that yet. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review.